The Barn and the Book Epilogue Saucer sat by his doghouse, enjoying the warm spring evening. Every now and then he threw back his head, sniffing the flower-scented air, and listening to the sounds of happy voices coming from the open windows of the refectory. Saucer turned his head. He heard a scuffling sound, coming from the nearby gate of the animal farm. Saucer stood up. "'It's me!' said Sam, climbing over the top of the fence and dropping down on the ground beside Saucer. "'I didn't want to wake all the other animals up squeaking the gate.' Saucer snuffed and puffed. He bounced from one paw to the other. He licked Sam's shoe." "'You should see that party in there,' said Sam, sitting down beside Saucer. "'That's the most people I ever saw at the monastery.' Saucer flopped down next to Sam. His front leg stuck out in front of him, his back leg stuck out in back of him. "'You look like Superdog when you do that,' said Sam. He rubbed the furry spot between Saucer's ears. They sat together in the twilight. "'They put my story in the book,' said Sam. Saucer sat up. "'It's in there forever.' If I have great, great, ten times great grandchildren, they could come here and read that book, and it would have a story in it by me. Saucer barked and pawed Sam's leg. Sam put his arm around Saucer. I didn't ever think that would happen. I didn't even know I could ever write something like that. Saucer licked Sam's ear. It's like trying to look at the dark, said Sam, remembering his night in the barn. You can't make your eyes see something without any light. Saucer cocked his head and looked puzzled. Knowing things before they happen, explained Sam. You can't, just like you can't see in the dark. Saucer rested his head on Sam's shoulder. He didn't say anything because even a corgi can't speak to a human with human words. But Sam didn't mind. He sat still, feeling Saucer's breath in his ear. I love you, Saucer, Sam said. The End